KLAS TV first went on the air 60 years ago this Monday. We carried programs from three networks, not just CBS. Yeah, but our fledgling station had plenty of on air time to fill, so local programming was born. The technology was rudimentary, sets were sparse, but there was never a shortage of imagination or enthusiasm. Tonight, as part of our anniversary celebration, George Knapp looks back at the earliest TV celebrities of Las Vegas. CBS television in the 1950s certainly lived up to its billing as the Tiffany Network, hosting now classic shows. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Gunsmoke. Las Vegas TV viewers, who'd been mesmerized just by test patterns on their screens, were thrilled. And uh, we got. Uh, I Love Lucy, I think that was a big deal. As the young son of the original majority shareholder of KLAS-TV, Gardner Jolly got an inside look at the earliest local programs. On-air personalities like affable movie host Gus Jufre became instant celebrities and never again could buy a drink. We uh, usually ask the boys and girls about good habits or safety rules. Will you share with us? The most popular of the local shows were kids' programs, such as the long-running Cinderella Time with Nancy Myrtle Bunker as You Know Who. Kids loved cowboys in the 50s, including Channel 8's mustachioed cowpoke Bostic Wester. Heroic on-air submarine pilot Commander Lee mobilized nearly every youngster in town as part of his private military force. The town at that time had 50,000 people. I had 7,800 submariners that got on the show by signing up with my sponsor. In later years, the commander, a.k.a. Jack Lehman, became a long-serving district court judge. Las Vegas civil rights activist Bob Bailey hosted his own show, the first African-American-owned local TV show in the country. From the studios of Channel 8 Television, it's Teen Beat Las Vegas. Among the most challenging of the early shows was a live dance party modeled after American bandstand called Teen Beat Las Vegas. Well, I, I was a star in my own mind and in reality. I mean, it was that way. I was, it was a small town, but I thought I was Dick Clark. I didn't, to this day, I think I'm Dick Clark. Brash teenagers Steve Miller and Keith Austin pitched the show idea to the Channel 8 station manager and somehow got it on the air. The concept was to pack a hundred or so teenagers into a crowded studio for an hour each week, crank up the music, and broadcast it live. What could go wrong? Everything went wrong. It was funny, though. I mean, there'd be fist fights, there'd be, we'd have to throw people out. It was just like a dance. So when the camera went live at 5 o'clock on Saturday evenings, whatever was going to happen, was going to happen. Miller estimates the show was canceled at least 10 times because of smart Alec hijinks, including poking fun at his own sponsors. But the station kept bringing it back. The popularity of the TV show led the host to launch their own club for teenagers. The club fed the show and vice versa. Big name entertainers who were in town would stop by. Show Premium Gasoline with TCP presents Show News with Hank Thornley. But the heart and soul of the station is and has always been news. Pioneer newsman Hank Thornley set the bar high right out of the gate. We're only on 15 minutes to begin with. Uh, then Cronkite went to a half hour, so we went to a half hour. And it was doing so well, we added another half hour. The news became the flagship of the station. And it stayed that way through the decades. An amazing pantheon of talented journalists has worked at KLAS. They've been honored with the highest awards in all of journalism, including best newscast in America. And more importantly, over the long haul, they've earned the trust of local viewers. The Channel 8 tells the, tells the best stories. The reporters here, the photographers here, the producers here put together the most interesting stories. It's about the fact that people know us here in Southern Nevada. They trust us, so they talk to us. They give us the stories. George Knapp, 8 News Now. By the way, Steve Miller, the co-host of Teen Beat, went on to serve as a Las Vegas City Councilman. His Teen Beat nightclub became Club Paradise, an adult entertainment site. Miller still owns the property. If you'd like to learn more about the intertwined stories of KLES-TV in Las Vegas itself, check out the extensive timeline we've created on our website. Use the keyword anniversary. These stories have been really fun. <laughs> we do have